don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. The next question comes from Kelsey. Kelsey writes, hi, Betsy. I love your podcast and eventually got my mom hooked as well. Hi, mom. I'm writing to you today because I just can't figure out what type of rug to put in my son's nursery. It's a small room and I keep debating what size and shape of rug are going to work best. I settled for a small white rug by the crib because my son was due any day and I had to make a decision. But that lovely white rug quickly became gray from us standing beside the crib, and I'm realizing a white rug may not have been the best choice. So back to the drawing board. Here are my questions. What size of rug should I buy? The room dimensions are nine and a half by 11 and a half. There's a dresser against one wall and a crib against the parallel wall. I've heard various ru rules about rug sizes, but I struggle to find any standard rug size that would work with the design rules I've heard. What shape of rug should I buy? I like the idea of a larger rug so that my son can play on it. The entire house is hardwood, which is not a friendly surface for crawling and falling. I do like the look of hardwood though. What color rug should I buy? I don't like color, sorry. It took everything in me to incorporate any color into the nursery at all, especially since we didn't know the gender and I wasn't into the yellow green idea. So the nursery is gray with white navy curtains and green artwork. Since another white rug is out of the question, it just gets dirty too quickly. Perhaps I should buy gray, green, or blue, or some subtle pattern that incorporates these colors. What types of rugs wear well? I would love for it to be somewhat easy to clean, but the appearance definitely matters. Where should I buy this rug? I've stopped a number of places, but I'd love to hear your advice. I've attached pictures and would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you in advance, Kelsey and Thatcher Gray. And yes, I love the color gray so much that my son's middle name is Gray. All right, Kelsey. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And your nursery and your son are adorable. So is your dog. Guys, if you're wondering what Kelsey's son and her dog look like, you can head over to our new YouTube channel, affordableinteriordesign.com slash links and subscribe to that YouTube channel so you won't miss a thing. And you'll get to see everybody's pictures and a few pictures that I insert of my own to help illustrate these issues and their solutions. All right, Kelsey, let's get in here. So you have lots and lots of questions. And yes, I never recommend a white rug because of your experience. No matter where it's put, it gets dirty and it gets dirty quickly and it never looks fresh. I also don't recommend really dark rugs. In your case, you might have gone with a navy. In other rooms, some people go with black. And that also does not look fresh pretty much the minute you buy it. If there's any lint or hair, it shows everything. So you want to go with something mid-tone, ideally with a pattern, so that way it can camouflage some of those stains. Now, the size, I can't tell you because as I've mentioned before on this podcast, dropping things into floor plans is more technical for me than just here's where everything should go at first impression. I always try every possible option, which leads to about you know 10 to 15 minutes of my time. And there's a number of factors. So I'll just give you some guidelines, right? I see you have a glider. Sometimes putting a rug under a glider half on, half off means that the glider kind of wibble wobbles. So oftentimes you want to make sure to put the rug either fully under the glider or not under it at all to avoid that unstable wobble effect. I also really do not like the look of a rug under a dresser. I don't like it under a dresser because it starts to look like wall-to-wall -wall carpeting or it's half on, half off. It just looks ill-fitting. I don't mind a crib being half on, half off because of its heaviness and because of its four legs, you'll find it will not wobble unless, you know, there's some kind of extenuating circumstance. Um, and that can be a really nice look. I also agree with you that you'd like the rug to cover as much floor as possible, at least those open areas, so that the little one can have room to play and crawl. Sometimes that means that it's not a great fit for a standard size rug because standard size rugs come in 
standard sizes. So in situations like this, where maybe I need a long, narrow rug, or maybe I need, you know, an interesting square rug that I just can't seem to find at stores, well, I will use floor tiles, F-L-O-R.com. And those are carpet squares that stick together. They stick to themselves with stickers. They have a built-in rug pad, which prevents them from slipping all over. And they come in a variety of textures. So you can get something a little bit more plush if you're wanting it to be kind of snuggly, or you can get something quite low pile if you're worried about it, you know, producing dust or capturing dust, things like that. They have a variety of styles, colors, and patterns, so you'll have lots to choose from. And since you already have blue in the drapes and it's like that deep navy that I'm wanting you to avoid with the rug, you could either go with a rug or floor tile option that has pattern, maybe that has a navy pattern on a gray background, or maybe you pick a gray floor tile that has a very subtle pattern. I think that could be really fun and play well off what I'm seeing here in the nursery. So yes, um, I prefer lower pile rugs in nurseries because high pile rugs like a shag rug will capture a lot of stuff, right? Cheerios, dust, pet hair. So that way when your child is crawling or grabbing at the fibers, they might be, you know, getting gross stuff on their hands. Because I remember my kids would like lick their hands or drool and then play on the rug and one of my fellow designers uh, had a shag rug at her house. And so I, when I would take my child over to play, because we had children of similar ages, I would notice his hands coming up the carpet. I'd be like, ah, um, you know, she was very tidy and the rug was super soft, but what's really in there? And how do we get it out of there? So I myself prefer something lower pile that's very easy to clean. And also the other benefit of using floor tiles is that when one gets really nasty, say there's a really bad, I don't know if your kids were vomiters like mine, say there was a really bad vomit moment and it just wasn't going to get out very easily. Well, you could just pop out that tile and put in a fresh one. I always have extra floor tiles in my home. I keep them in a closet, and when the worst should happen, I just pop in a new one. In fact, just yesterday, I was configuring my son's floor tiles because I noticed that he took one of the um, felt pads off of his desk chair. So maybe it fell off. It probably fell off, right? I'm sure he wasn't picking them off, but one fell off and the desk chair scratched his floor. So now I'm like, where can we put these floor tiles so that this never happens again? So if you need a solution for a very low pile rug or a rug that you can make into any size you want or a rug that's super forgiving with stains, check out floor.com. Let's get back to some of your other questions about this rug. What color? So I gave you some previews on the colors I'm thinking of, but you know, we're going to avoid that navy and the white. And I'd keep it neutral. You know, it really sounds like your dream is to have a neutral nursery. So even though you did give it some pops with the green and the blue and the artwork, it sounds like it was against your will. So let's just make the rug, which is a huge visual element in the room, something that totally aligns with the vision you had. Just make it a very light gray, maybe a subtle pattern. Right. And then you mentioned what types of rugs wear well. I highly recommend that you avoid a wool rug because wool rugs can be like wool sweaters where they're itchy, right? I remember in our living room when I first had my son, we had a wool rug and he would play on it without a shirt, just in his diaper. I would be down there on the floor with him and then I'd pick him up and his back would be all red. And it was kind of that reaction to the scratchy wool. So I got rid of that rug and instead I got a polypropylene or acrylic rug and then we didn't have any issues. It was very soft and we were able to wash it quite easily. So if the worst should happen, I was able to stain treat it very easily. But keep in mind with a polypropylene rug, sometimes it does off gas because it's not a synthetic fiber. So there's lots of pros and cons with different rugs. The one thing I would totally avoid are silk and viscose rugs. 
So viscose is a synthetic silk. It's very soft. It's shimmery. It's beautiful. There are so many times I'm tempted to use it for either a master application or in your case, a nursery. But the problem is that that synthetic silk shows every stain, whether it's just a droplet of water or something much worse than that. And it's impossible to clean. So my mother-in-law is just moving to a different apartment. She found some rugs and she wanted me to pick the one that I preferred. And a few of them were viscose. And I had to just turn her away from that, even though they were my favorite pattern. So there we go. In terms of where you should buy a rug, I think floor.com would be great, but I don't hesitate to buy rugs from anywhere that, you know, I find a pattern that I'm really into and the correct size and the correct material. Additionally, I do not like to invest a lot in a nursery or a kid's room because my kids' tastes change a lot, and I'm constantly evolving their room uh, as they tell me, Mom, I'm so over Gray, or Mom, I'm so over Thomas the Train. It's time to get something new. In fact, we just switched out Pokemon for Fortnite, and... uh, So I think it's really important to be reflecting your child's taste back to them. And of course, when they're really little, maybe they don't have too much of an opinion. But as they get older, I think you'll find that that your gray is going to have some reactions to gray. Good or bad. We'll see. Keep me posted, Kelsey. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.